Hello everyone, my name is Lorthorn, and welcome to How To Bewitched Mint, Advanced Edition. So I'm going to be covering some of the more advanced, complicated stuff with Bewitched Mint, as well as Demon Summoning and all that good stuff. So, let's get to that. Um, Alright, first though, I want to cover a small little note I missed last time. So, White Sage seeds are acquired by breaking these little sticks in the desert, dead bushes. Breaking them is how you get white sage. There's a very small chance, along with their chance of dropping sticks, they'll drop white sage. And I'm not going to go about breaking every single one of them, but if you want to find yourself a little bit of white sage, then go and break them sticky boos. Okay, cool, cool. Now let's move on to um, some complicated rituals from the Book of Shadows. We're not going to touch any of this just yet. But we'll get there, don't you worry. Alright, so, from the Book of Shadows, uh, we have the transportation spells, which have been made a whole lot simpler. Although, okay, here I was going to do the ritual of something or other, what's it called? Biome changing. But it's a little bit finicky right now, so we're just going to ignore that. So, best to leave it to another patch, because the ritual of bio changing, biome, not bio, Biome changing has a lot of problems, I find, and it's difficult to use, and actually, here, check this out. So, um, when you right-click with the boo line, it lets you know what biome it is. So I actually did change the savanna to a desert, but all that does is, I think, affect the rainfall here. So it's uh, not much, and not exactly certain what else it does. Anyways, let's move on to a fun little thing which is one of the cool transportation systems. So if you get yourself some dimensional sand and a name tag, and you give your tag a rememberable name, all 63 of them, you can actually apply name tags to cauldrons. So this is cauldron number one now. And what this does is you see it's all bubbly and green. When you throw dimensional sand into a cauldron, it'll make it do this. Then when you stand on or in the cauldron, and you type into the chat the name of another cauldron, we have cauldron 2, it will teleport you to that cauldron. And so you have this little transportation thing. And it will stay green and fizzy, and so you can keep using it. So now we sit on this one, and we go number 1, number 2, number 1, number 2. And you can just keep doing this as long as you have altar power. Now, I think it's a really cool little thing. So you can have a whole bunch of different cauldron names and teleport around with them. So that's the first step of the teleportation. The next step of teleportation we are going to cover is the waystones. Waystones were made way easier. They work a lot better. I really like the improvements to their coding. And it teleports you to a coronation. You simply start the ritual. And it's a ritual of open gateways. Anything standing inside the portal will get teleported to wherever you set it. And another cool little thing you can do is you can just activate again. So as long as you have that waystone in there, you can just keep doing it. And I think that's pretty nifty. So waystones have a pretty simple recipe. Let's just take a little look-see at that. Um, oops. There we go. So just stone, a uh, opal, and a pentacle, and you'll get yourself a nice little waystone. And then you can take that waystone, and we, you can say, okay, where do you want to teleport to? Let's teleport over here. So now we've set this thing, that's the coordinates on the overworld, and we go and put it into our little purple circle, which it requires just the one purple circle, it doesn't require two, or three, just one. And then you can go activate the ritual, and maybe we actually don't want to get teleported, though. So, um, as you can see, actually, I believe it just teleported that object over here. Yeah, so it can actually teleport items. So any empty in the circle will get teleported. Um, so let's spawn a horde of villagers. And yeah, it teleports everything that's in the circle. So that is actually a really cool thing. You could basically have your waystone set up to teleport from circle to circle with power. It's a nifty little transportation gimmick. Like the cauldron, both require power, but very useful, nice transportation, and its coding is way simpler. So that is the teleportation traveling from Bewitchment. Next on the order of business 
is puppets. I will need my assistant though for that, so let me just get them in here. All right, and here we have our assistant, or um, test subject anyways. Say hello, test subject. Ah, yeah, isn't he great? Okay, there is a whole group of various different puppets. There is the um, basic puppet you can make. We covered last time. This puppet actually doesn't do anything. Now, most puppets are protection for yourself. However, one, which is the one that everyone wants to play around with, is the voodoo puppet. And this lovely little puppet lets you harm people, especially the person you have tag lock. Now, to get a tag lock of a target, you have to simply take yourself the little tag lock kit, and you can either sneak up behind them and poke them in the butt with it, or steal their hair, I guess, or you can click on their pillow. Either way, that'll get you a tag lock. Then, with the poppet in your off hand and the tag lock in your main hand, right click and it will enchant the poppet. Then take the voodoo poppet and put the bone needles in your left hand and or your off hand and the voodoo poppet in your main hand. And then when you shift and click with it, you get poked and take damage, as you can see my assistant is doing. You can also take the voodoo poppet and throw it into fire, and that will light the victim on fire and kill them, most likely, because while they're burning to death. And if you want to see the process, you have a tag look, so you can use this at the same time. Now we got our assistant back, and he is not happy, I, I presume. No, he is not happy at all. Well. You, you still ready for more experiments, test subject? Yeah, I think I think he's quite ready. Okay, excellent. So, next we have, in case you don't actually want that to happen to yourself, the voodoo of voodoo poppet protection. The, the voodoo poppet of voodoo poppet protection. So again, it is enchanted via these means, and now... Lord Cameron should be protected from our voodoo puppet. So I'm going to give him this voodoo puppet to hold on to. There, there we go. Now he's got it. And if we, as you see, attempt to harm him, he is now protected from our vile voodoo magic. And we can keep on trying, but he is going to stay perfectly fine. This does use up the durability of both voodoo puppets. So if he gives us back our little voodoo puppet here, we will see that it is damaged. So his death protection, or his voodoo protection, voodoo poppet, is now not as useful. It will slowly wear and tear away. We'll just get rid of that, and we'll chuck that. I uh, have no need for those anymore. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of different poppets, not going to cover them all. So basically, every single, almost all the poppets are to put on yourself, and they buff you, and then you can attack your target and, and make you way happier, but, I have one of them, the Voodoo Puppet, which is the only pop people care about, um, lets you prick your opponents and friends. Then you discriminate between them. Now we'll cover curses. To do a curse, get a tag lock of the intended victim, and find the recipes for any given curse in the Codex Infirmian under curses. We're going to do the Curse of Solar Hatred because it is probably one of the best ways to show example of a curse. Put the tag lock in, as we've already done, and all the required ingredients, and then light the brazier of flame, and it'll curse the intended target. This one makes the victim burst into flame in sunlight, like zombies do. So, any time they show up, they will now be on fire and have a miserable, horrible existence. And that is how you do curses. All right, that's all we need our test subject for. Thought I was going to do more with him, but turns out actually covering all the curses is rather pointless. So, we will move on from there then. So, I'd like you to all thank Lord Cameron and say goodbye, Lord Cam. All right, now then, let's cover demon summoning. To summon a demon, you'll need to get yourself a nice little hellish bauble and some smirched robes. You actually don't require either of these things, but it looks cool. Makes you feel like a cultist. Also, the bobble will stop you from getting mugged. 
Another thing that'll stop you from getting mugged is surrounding your summoning circle with salt. This makes it so the demon can't cross past your summoning circle and murder your face off. Then you require just a simple group of items. Bottle of blood, demonic horn, a mortal soul, a diamond, some hellbora, a piece of gold, a little bit of rotten flesh, and a ritualistic knife. Put all these items into the circle except for the mortal soul and you have the ritual just about ready. Unlike most rituals, you actually don't right-click on this one with an empty hand. Instead, you put a villager in it, or another player, into the circle, and you uh, murder them, to put it simply, or ritually sacrifice them, either or will do. And then it will start up your lovely ritual of demon summoning. Demons are very hostile entities, so make sure your game is not in peaceful when you do this ritual, because it's expensive and very annoying. And there we go, we got ourselves a lovely demon frond. Now, this demon, um, each demon has a unique name, or not a unique name, but a name, so this is Santharel, and they will actually trade with us. So they trade like a villager, they start with some basic stuff, but if we give him a whole ton of gold, that should make him happy. And then he'll get the little effects that all villagers do. And now we can trade more stuff with him. And once they're traded up enough, they'll actually start giving you some very interesting stuff. So here, he's offering us the nether brick statue of Lilith. And for some diamonds, a box of evil. This is one of the unique items that demons get view, which you can't get anywhere else. So make sure to uh, snap these things up if you see them. And they're pretty good items in some ways. I mean, this is actually a Pandora's box, so... Who knows what it'll do to you. I would recommend finding a way to kill him. They will drop for you some lovely little items. Demonic horns, blaze powder, and the thing we want is actually the demon hearts. Demon hearts are what lets you summon the greater demons. Now, there is only two greater demons you can summon right now, which is a bit of a shame, but they are both pretty unique and pretty cool. So we're just going to get all the stuff that he wants to be summoned with. It, whatever, is a demon. I don't know how they work. Put all the stuff in to summon your demon. You need the demon heart. And then put down your sheepy sheep. There we go. It's a little, a little finicky. And then uh, in your offhand, quickly put a pentacle and uh, Eat the stew of grotesque, which is horrible. It has a whole bunch of awful effects, but it will show that you are a pledge to Basil Month, and um, he will then attempt to murder you because it still didn't like you. We're going to try this again to pledge ourselves to him, hiding behind here. Um, he is currently trying to attack us. Hopefully, though. You should like us now? Yes, so you have to do the pledging while well, he's out and about. And then Lord Basiloth will light you. And then, if you have enough levels when you've got him one of the demon lords like you, and you talk to them, they will give you a new pact. So he's giving me the pact of devouring rage. Absolutely no idea what it does, but the demon lords give you various different packs when you do stuff for them. Also, if you manage to kill them, uh, you can get their cool little staffs and stuff, but they are insanely tough. And once you've killed the old goat, you will get his staff, which is a pretty nifty item. It's got two snakes on it, and it lets you summon spectral ghost snakes to do your bidding. And if that's not cool, then I don't know what is. The other great demon you can summon is some punk, I can't even remember his name. Anyways, his recipe for summoning is a little bit different, or ritual. It still involves most of the same things. Still need to kill a sheep. Only a few items are different. And this will summon Leonardo, or Leonard. And he is the master of potions and brews. And you get him out. He's a pretty interesting fellow. 
He's a big old goat. Um, they're actually both goats. He's another goat. And he is a whole lot harder to kill than the other one because he regenerates himself. But anyways, once you have him killed, you get your his staff. Now his staff is a pretty nifty little item. This staff allows you to make witch brews a splashing and to charge spells. So you take his wand and the splash potion, put him in a crafting table, and it will charge the wand up 16 times with that splash potion. And now you can shoot that splash potion 16 times. Now, we're also going to actually cover here some how to get the frost, the outer world frost, whatever it's called. And that is by throwing a potion of ice world, which is containing its wand, onto solid stone. And this will turn it into perpetual ice. So that's how you go and get yourself perpetual ice with this potion. As you can see, as we shoot it, it uses up charges, and it's pretty cool. So it just hit some good old-fashioned stone, though, with some potions of ice world, and you will find yourself some perpetual ice. As you can see, boom, perpetual ice. The staff can't be repaired or anything, but it has a few good charges in it. So that is how to do Advanced Bewitchment, which is just code for the expensive bewitchment that takes a lot of points. I have been Lorethorn. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next how-to video where I will explain all your questions that you wish to ask. If there is any other mods that you would like a how-to or a showcase of, let me know as well in the comments what you'd like me to cover. And I'll do my best to cover that mod, especially if it's a cool or complicated one. Because I always find those fun to work with. Also, if they don't have, I don't know, very good coverage or it's slow. Something like that. Because I like to make faster, harder hitting how-tos and not make slow ones that ramble on too much, like this ending is. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. And goodbye.